Hello guys, this is Lotos. Today I'm going to introduce you one of the company that I used recently and I immediately became fan of. So it's a company called Schlafrei Schulz. So it's a German company and they sharpen all kinds of things. Anything that is need to be sharpened, they are specialized in saws and knives and scissors, things like that. Uh, they are located in Germany, northern part of Germany. I'll put the, their Instagram and the company website link in the description box and the comment box so you can check them out. Uh, they are really they did a fantastic job on sharpening my tools recently. Um, this is the scissor and this is the cleaver and this is the hammer. I'll talk one by one uh, each. So if I talk about the sharpening scissors, I see a lot of videos and I talk a lot I see a lot of people talk about sharpening scissors at home or they I see how they sharpen it uh, on YouTube and 99% of those videos are wrong way uh, it's a terrible way um, that you the people who's actually sharpening their scissors deck they, they I get how they get their sharpness uh, but then it's a totally wrong way of how the, how you should sharp scissors uh, to actually you need to uh, it takes a multiple skills to sharpen scissors and to be honest if you need to do it correctly you need to uh, take it to the professionals um, I am fan of sharpening and um, on bench stones I like sharpening I, I know I'm good at sharpening I've been doing for more than 10 years but then in, when it comes to scissors I never do it uh, by myself I have to um, take it to the um, professionals I would normally send it to Japanese masters who make scissors to sharpen them. Because I'm in Europe, I need to find someone in Europe. And if, if I need to f uh, sharpen my scissors, now I know where I need to send to. Schleifrei Schulz sharpen scissors very well. They know how to sharpen, they know how to do it well. So this is the Blanchard antique scissor. So it's previous ones, it's not current ones. I'm not sure how the current Blanchard scissors um, cut or how they perform but this is the vintage one and I especially asked them to keep their patina so all of these are antique tools and I wanted to uh, keep this patina um, very well so they did what, what I asked them so they just sharpened the scissors so if you look for, for scissors this is not flat, okay? This needs to be concave, okay? So you need to sharpen it on a radius curve, okay? So this is concave, and also this side is also concave. And you need to have a very stiff, high angle sharpening on both sides, okay? This is how, how they come and sharp. They're a little rusty, rusty, and they had a little bit of patina, but then for working part, they need to be, of course, sharpened. So I didn't mind losing patina over here on this side and the edge. The edge needed some correction, and they did it correctly very well, too. So uh, before condition, I should have made a video about it, but then uh, I kind of forgot. But then, again, it's just uh, they did a really perfect job, and the price was really reasonable as well. Yeah. So this is scissor for cutting fabrics and leather thin leather mostly and you can also of course cut some thread as well this scissors will be featured in my video as well so um, in order to uh, find really good scissors is that you need to um, think about um, features these scissors has so first of all uh, you'll see a lot of this type of scissors um, on many places or flea markets or ebay uh, but then first thing you need to see is if the the hinge or the pivot points are unscrewable. So if you find scissors that are pinned together, uh, of course you can remove the pin, uh, but then it already means it's not that high quality. Uh, it means it's more of a disposable uh, scissors. Even though without plastic handle, with the all single metal construction, there are many scissors that are pinned. So there is no screws, there is no slots, there is no um, place to grab, it's just uh, very slight domed pin on both sides uh, those kind of scissors are not that worth to sharpen and even if you unpin that if you can remove that pin and you sharpen it you need a problem to pin it again you need the proper tools for that so having a screw in these pivot points is the first sign that you find a okay scissor okay second point you need to have some kind of uh, uh, some kind of adjust screw or some kind of uh, 
um, post. Yeah, I call it post, but you need some kind of this um, pause that separates the handle to close it to the at the end. So what means is that as you sharpen your scissor, you need to you lose your material. So this plate get portion gets thinner and thinner on both sides. Yeah. So if you sharpen it, you're removing metal bit by bit. And if your handle is already met to the maximum, if you sharpen it, your blades will not meet each other at the end. So it will kind of, it will not really cut at certain points. It's just, just it will just have a gap between the blades. So if you have this, yeah, it's already a really good sign because you you also sharpen, you also remove some of the uh, posts so that you close further, so that your scissor gets shut more so that you don't uh, even though you lost material you compensate those um, by sharpening or removing some of the posts here so that's the good sign of scissor this one is antique Blanchard so it's already um, high quality and it cuts really well I'll show you how it cuts so normally you don't want to cut any of the paper or box materials right there because they're extremely abrasive so uh, for just demonstration, I will cut this um, all, um, A4 all piece of paper. So, just, just, just like that, it just cuts beautifully. You know, very well. Okay, they sharpen it very, very well to my likings. I really like them. Okay, and they had a very good turnaround time as well. So. Um, I really like their service. So that's that. Yeah. So this will also feature in my video very much. So yeah, stay watch, stay tuned. Second, this is cleaver. So what is cleaver? So uh, here we call it, uh, not we, sorry. <laughs> here in Germany, uh, uh, they call it Hackbeil. Yeah. So it's kind of, it means almost like X, but then it's just a cleaver. So uh, it's very rough cutting, so you just chop down material. Uh, I know Chinese cleaver are mostly like that. In Chinese restaurants, they chop down uh, material, just kung kung kung, and they just cut the meats in half with with bones and stuff. Germans also and Western people also have this um, similar tradition. I'm not sure who started first, but then they also have something called hackbeil or hackmesser. It means hacking hacking knife. So. This is vintage one made by Ftic. Yeah, so Ftic makes still really nice uh, knives. This is one of their vintage model. So maybe I'll just um, get into this topic later on in details. But today I'm just going to briefly talk about it. So this is number hundred. Yeah, Ftic made in Germany. Yeah, so it's not that antique. So after the um, German unification, now they call it. Um, made in Germany so it's not made in West Germany so it's made in Germany so it's not that old but then it is vintage model it's a, one of their high carbon model and one of the interesting thing from this model is that you can see this different color from from the edge about here yeah you see this two different discoloration this is the uh, of course it is patina but it means that this is the line for the heat treatment so what it means is that only this part is hard okay the upper part there is brighter this color it means it stays uh, soft so uh, when you when you just abuse this knife really hard like boom 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 uh, it will not break it will have a very good toughness so hot edge soft edge which is tough so hot edge it means it stays sharp very long time oftentimes if you find these kind of antique knives they have a messed up spine over here because people used to just, you know, hammer it down with a steel hammer. So these parts are all chewed up and stuff. Yeah. So that's um, something to avoid, at least minimize. You know. But then this one is, has a perfect condition. You know, really good spine, has a really good eye, and beautiful patina. I always say. And also, here's a really interesting part about this knife. So, if you take a look, you know, there's a word called schlief yeah schlief and then there's a geometry yeah and there's a good and falsch yeah so if you already guessed it uh, it's a german word called sharpening and this is good this is false so what it means is that 
they want to have it the manufacturer of the knife wanted to have the customers to sharpen their edge convex edge like this okay and this one is flat like very sharp and like you would sharpen your normal knives your leather knives or any any stuff that you sharpen on sharpening stone you better sharpen it like this it's easier but then to have a convex edge like this you know it's a little difficult to average person to do that so i had to find someone to sharpen this thing and of course left right shoots made a fantastic job just like they describe it here they sharpen the edge like that so this is the really good point the manufacturer you know, who made this knife stamped this to the product so that it permits it leave the instruction how they should sharpen their tools and they explain the customers that you should do this so it's a really interesting way um, good way to tell customer what to do uh, for the best of the product of course you could do this but then it will um, chip out a little easier because you don't have much more much more material supporting the edge you know? so it will maybe work but then it might chip you know, it will, the edge will break you know, bit, bit by bit no, I'm not sure what this means is 1 times 69 not sure what it means I will go further investigate about this knife and uh, maybe explain you guys also as well so beautiful sharpening left right Schultz did it's really sharp sharp yeah of course when they buff it of course they um, had to go a little bit further in this way I don't mind this at all I don't expect just full on polishing to this area and then has patina started over here it's a uh, it's uh, nearly impossible I know because for the convex edge this is this is what the best can do really it's a uh, it's something I, I really like so they did a fantastic job of what they did if I show you handle a little bit they are not the full tang they are almost half tang but a little longer so it's three-fourths tang yeah it would is really good condition as well I don't intend to use this uh, knife so I will just keep it for a conversation piece or just uh, have a collection or have a reference to use uh, to when I make cleaver I have to um, use it as a reference how long they should be and the design as well because if you see this vintage knife the curve is beautiful so starting from the top it just goes swift back and then straight and then slightly to the back again so from here like suk and then straight and then suk so has a beautiful curve has a beautiful curve here as well really good length really good thickness and mass so it's a it's going to be a really good reference for the future as well so for this kind of thickness so it's almost five millimeter thick spine of edge it's a huge huge edge yeah watch this yeah they shave paper yeah do you see that like small bits of paper you can shave it yeah you can shave like that so they did a fantastic job they don't know how to sharpen their sharpen the edge tools like this so this thing it was already rusted patinaed also um, was difficult to sharpen in a convex edge style by at home they did a really good job at really reasonable price so I really appreciate the effort yeah and thirdly this is really important as well so I was really impressed with their customer service I was really I had to spoke in German I'm, I think they will also reply you in English as well I think if you are an international customer from in Europe or other places they will also they will be glad to reply you and I really I really like their customer service so I asked them if you can if they can also sharpen or sharpen or polish the hammerhead so this is how they did look at this so it's again I had to add, tell them that please don't do anything don't do anything keep the patina don't touch anywhere but only the face of the the hammer yeah so look at this how this is what they did yeah this is exactly how I want it and they delivered it so polished hammerhead so I want to talk about this polishing the head so 
you guys already know that I like to polish my hammerhead very well. You know, I already showed you guys that I made a lots of hammer, and I already polished my head really well like this. This was possible because this was small enough to hold it in hand, and also it was it was much much easier because I could use my sandpaper to to like shoe shining technique to polish this hammer. Yeah, it was much easier because it's small. I could chuck in the vise. It was small enough. It was, this is only around uh, 15 millimeter. It's under 20 millimeter size. But look at this hammer. This is George Barnsley antique hammer that I already showed you guys before. And the hammer head diameter is about uh, 50 millimeter or 55 millimeter. It's really big. So I can't use a shoe shining technique at this moment. It's too wide. Yeah, and it had a pitting and it had a rust. I had to do it invest a lot of time. If the surface gets larger like this, difference work difference between this and this, it's a huge difference. Already working surface is big on in in the eye also, but then in real life you if you grind it, if you sharpen it, if you had to do it in this kind of large surface, it takes days and weeks, you know. So I just wanted to have a um, have have it um, sharpened or polished by someone who's professional who knows um, how to do this kind of stuff, and they did a perfect job. You know? look at look at how they sharpened the face of the hammer on both sides. You know? The contour that I asked them, just follow the contour of the of the original uh, the curvature of the blade of the hammerhead. They did it exactly what I want it to be. So it was a perfect job for them to do uh, the hammerhead polishing. So it's a really great that I um, asked them to do this kind of job. I don't regret it at all. It was time and money, everything. I'm just so happy with their service. I'd like to uh, keep sending my hard to sharpen tools such as knives and scissors. So three things I would had a really big much trouble if I didn't know them. So I thank them again in this video. If you are one of the customers who is looking for really good sharpeners, who can you know sharp, you sharpen your tools or polish your tools, you can ask them and they will take care of you really well too. So I highly recommend them. I'll put the link in the description and the comment box for the details. So thanks for watching guys as always. I'll see you guys next video. Bye bye.